The folks over at IC Station have sent me a DC to DC buck power converter. This is a step down uh, DC to DC converter. It'll step down voltages to whatever you preset and also limit current. Let's take a look at how this one operates and then we're going to load it up and uh, see how well it performs. Not a bad little unit actually and it's great for things like charging batteries from your solar system. So here's the back side of the board. As you can see, it's got a huge power inductor as this unit will pass 10 amps continuous. What it is, of course, is it's a down converter. You feed it with your input voltage and then you get an output voltage and you can limit the current and the voltage. The voltage and the current in this case is set with multi-turn set screws. I'm gonna connect this up. We're going to set it to a voltage and we'll put it under a load and we'll, we'll test it and there's not a heck of a lot to see on this thing. It's just a voltage regulator that you could use for charging batteries, etc. if you want to regulate the amount of current that your batteries would take. For this case, I'm going to put it in this case. It comes with a little, a little plastic case. So we'll assemble the case and we'll put the, uh, the heat sink onto it here. The heat sink just goes onto this side of the board here. And uh, we'll put the cabinet together and then we'll test it and see how this thing performs. So the heat sink here goes on to the circuit board like that and that, what that does is that'll of course drain the heat that is the uh, main um, transistors here are soldered down to the board itself and the board acts as part of your heat sink. You put your heat sink on top here and will dissipate heat as it passes through the board. This module came from IC station and I should apologize to them for not getting on this right away. I've been actually sitting on this thing for a little while because I've been busy with other projects that have been uh, giving me a little bit higher priority lately. We're doing some big time changes at work and everyone's getting retrained for for new uh, new products and services so I've been spending a lot of time putting in a fair bit of overtime at my day job and I just haven't been uh, getting to a lot of the video stuff. Um, the stuff that you see me publishing, a lot of the stuff I shot uh, you know, several weeks ago and I'm just getting around to publishing it now. We're going to remove the, the little trick to remove this uh, when you get tape, when you get these um, uh, plexiglass or Lexan type and you want to remove the, the stickers easy. Here's an easy, quick way to do it. Just stick some tape down to it and they will come right off. Large spacers go on the bottom. Small spacers screw into the larger spacers. This will hold the top and bottom shield on. So we'll attach these and then put the covers on. And I'll set this up to my power supply. We'll set it to a higher voltage. Set this down to our, our low voltage that we want to regulate to. And uh, set up the current and demo how it works. I got a funny story to tell you too. Um, every so often I'll get s s some of my uh, viewers want a test tape. And I've been, I've been ma making up uh, VHS and audio um, test tapes for speed calibration and, and so forth. Uh, I have uh, a couple of decks that are certified and calibrated because I had a calibration tape, a factory calibration tape that I've used to calibrate my own machine and I use that machine to make recordings on for you know for, for people to align the heads and align the speed on their cassette deck. And I've I've sent out dozens of cassette speed uh, adjustment tapes over the last couple years. When I say dozens, I've, I've probably, well, I bought a case of tapes, uh, 12 tapes about, uh, I guess about a year, maybe two years ago. And uh, I've sent them out to people and I just had a, recently had a request for another tape. So I figured, okay, I'll go back to the store and you know buy some more blank tapes. And not one of the retail stores 
that I've been, gone to, and I've gone to about 10 stores now, nobody sells audio cassette tapes anymore. And they all say the same thing. Go to the big A, that being Amazon. So I ordered a tape from Amazon, and I, I'm, I'm losing money on this because what I quoted the fella to to record the tape and post it to him, I would have made about five bucks by the time I pay for the shipping and everything and pay for the tape. <clears throat> I would have made about five bucks. I had to order a tape off Amazon, which cost ended up costing more than they were selling for retail at the time because they used to pick up you know, type one audio cassettes for around five bucks a piece. And I think I paid on Amazon, I think I paid five ninety five for it. But I had to pay for shipping to have it shipped to me. And the tape arrived. And I opened it up. Well, this came from the Amazon market, by the way, which Amazon market is just, I think a lot of times it's like eBay. It's like private individuals selling crap. I opened the package up. The tape's not even brand new. It's not wrapped. The BASF tape. It looks like, you know, it looks in good shape, but there was no factory wrapper on it. It's blank. I checked it and there's nothing recorded on it, but someone could have just bulk erased it. It doesn't have any writing or anything up. And I had to, I had, I had to laugh because this is what we've we, we, we've had to stoop to is, is, is ordering stuff off the internet. And when we get it, it sometimes isn't even new. And uh, I should have bought some from China. I know that there's a distributor here uh, called Western Imperial Magnetics who still sells uh, cassettes, but uh, they wanted to sell me a case of 50 and well, I don't think I'll need, a, I don't think I'll ever go through 50. I don't use cassette tapes and it's not like I could just go to my own stash of tapes and just grab one and use it because I never really used cassette tapes even when cassette tapes were in use. Um, I think the last car that I bought that had a cassette deck in it um, was a 1995 Thunderbird and the cassette deck immediately came out and was replaced by a DAT deck that had come out of my 1986 vehicle that I had bought 10 years prior. The cassette deck had come out of it when it was new. I mean, um, I don't think I've used cassettes myself for music since uh, the early 90s. I went to D Digital Audio Tape, DAT, and I haven't used cassettes, so I don't have any cassettes. That's what the fellow said. Well, just grab one of your old cassettes and use it. Well, I don't have a cassette to use. I've got, uh, I think I've got three tapes that I use when I'm servicing equipment. One's got a tone put on it. One's got a tone on it. One's got some music recorded on it. And one is one that I used for doing test recordings. I've got three or four tapes, and that's all I have. Anyway, I, I never thought I'd see that come where you couldn't buy a cassette tape I figured they'd be available especially since analog stuff is coming back you know vinyl is coming back cassettes are coming back but uh, you can go into the store and you can buy a new cassette deck but you can't buy the blank tapes in the store I'm gonna uh, hook this up to my power supply and we'll do some tests on this and see what this thing does and how it performs I'm gonna put a, a load on here and we'll load this thing down okay I got some jumper wires here. We'll connect it to the input and the output terminals for testing this unit. And then this unit, I'm going to connect it to my power supply, and I'm going to, I'm going to set my power supply up fairly high. I'll set it probably at, you know, 24 to 30 volts. <clears throat> it's a zero to 30 volt uh, power supply, so I'm going to set it up quite high and let this do the regulation, and not my power supply. Okay, we're going to turn on the power, and if we tap the input output button here, this will. Uh, tell us what our input versus output voltage is. So if I tap the button quickly, it'll tell me that I have 32.15 volts coming in. The output is not on right now, so it's sitting at like 1.8 volts. 
I tap the button here to turn on the output, we'll see that the output is set to 15.9. So right here I've got the constant voltage and constant current settings. So if I turn this multi-turn screw down, I'm going to set it down to about 13.8 uh, volts. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to just use a, a 50 watt halogen lamp just because I've got one here and that's a good resistive load. So we'll connect our... Actually it's a 55 watt halogen lamp I'm connecting to it. Our test jumpers to that and then we'll connect this up. And there's our halogen lamp drawing 4.61 amps. 2.1 from the power supply. If we look at the power supply we'll see that at the 31 volts from the power supply it's drawing 2.1 amps it's regulating at 13.4 volts 4.65 amps now I can control the current with the current control here if I turn this down once I get down to the point where I'm limiting current you'll see that the light actually is going to dim because the current limiting is on right the constant current light is on and it's actually gone down to 6 volts now because we're limiting it to 2.91 amps so this way you can if you've got something that needs a specific charge current such as a, a battery either at a gel cell or a lithium uh, cell you can set your regulation uh, current and this will regulate it the heatsink will get warm when you do this so if you're passing a lot of current you might want to skip putting the plastic cover on but it, it does get warm for sure I can still hold my finger on here but it is getting quite warm if I increase the current here our voltage will come back now if I want to turn the voltage up higher I can just adjust it here take it up to 13.8 volts if I want to take it down to 12 volts I can just adjust it down accordingly the input output button here will show you your voltage coming in and your voltage going out. If I press and hold, I think it switches the current, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, current. A oh, watts. 53.05 watts. That's what this lamp is drawing at 12 volts. If I increase the voltage up to 13.8, which is what you would have in a car when it's charging, the wattage actually goes up to 63 watts. Press and hold and release and it goes back to your current. And as you can see it's a nice soft start so when you turn it on it's not an instant on it comes up slowly as you can see here. If we look at the light it's a nice soft start. Long press of the power on off key it resets the display defaults short press is power on and off and short press of the in and out changes your input voltage and amps input and output if you get long press it becomes watts if I press and hold output shows watts if I tap it it's now your input voltage again a watt is a watt regardless it's 57.5 watts because it doesn't matter your output wattage is going to be the same both sides because your voltage is higher your current is lower but your watts are consumed to the same so this will toggle your voltage back and forth from your input to your output voltage press and hold will toggle between watts consumed and amps and now it's showing your your input and output voltage here. Now I reduce my input voltage, my output voltage will still remain the same. So I'm, I'm feeding it with 30, 32 volts now. If I start to turn down the power on the power supply, as you'll see the voltage is dropping here. The output is remaining constant. The output is not going to change until I get down below um, probably about 12, well just a little over 12 volts it'll probably start to drop. So let's just see where it starts to drop should start to drop any time now there we go okay so our voltage is starting to drop now 
and the point at where it drops is when I get to so there's the point where it starts to drop I'm at 12.45 uh, volts in and then as my voltage starts to drop the output will also start to fall so at at 10.5 volts in even though it's set for 12 volts the outputs only 10.2 because obviously it doesn't boost say to stop boost the voltage it only uh, limits the voltage but as my voltage increases now this is important for someone who's using something like this for solar charging because of course if your solar panel say your say you're charging 12 volt batteries and your solar panel is rated at 24 volts or 36 volts which you typically would use panels that are going to have a higher voltage than your batteries just so that you can take advantage of when the sun is not shining as bright so of course when the sun is shining really bright the voltage is going to go up you use something like this to regulate the voltage going to your batteries and regulate the current if you set it for 13.8 volts it is going to go up to 13.8 volts and it's not going to go any higher So there's 13.8. And it's going to stay there no matter what the input voltage is. Until your input voltage drops. Anyway, that's uh, that's it. That's all I can show you on this thing. It's a, uh, a charge regulator. I have projects that this one's going to go in and it's going to go as a battery charger. It's going to be a charge limit controller. I think I'll be building this into a into some type of a, a project to say maintain the battery on my motorcycle in the winter when it's uh, not uh, being driven. Anyway, that's it. Link to this is in the description. Came from IC Station. Pretty reasonable little module. Seems to be uh, fairly well built. Don't see any uh, issues with this. Build quality looks good. Thanks for watching.